and welcome to the top 10 Rurouni Kenshin villains. This list comprises the all time most villainous villains from Rurouni Kenshin. We won't be making any exceptions for this list. All Rurouni Kenshin related media qualify. So that includes manga and anime specific villains or villains that only had a small appearance in the franchise. This should be completely obvious but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. This top 10 is mainly my opinion so if you don't agree too bad, but that's where the comment section gives you a great opportunity to discuss about it. So again, to clarify, this is not a list of the top 10 most awesome or well developed or even strongest villains. No, this is a list on the most true to form villains. For those that don't know, Rurouni Kenshin is not a story where the villains are villains because they are evil or with little or no motivation at being so. They all have their reasons and mostly you can't really say that they are that evil because from their standpoint it's the other way around. A lot of villains hold grudges against Kenshin or other members of the main group. Grudges that are more often than not completely reasonable and really do make you think about if this really is just a simple battle between good and evil. Let's start with the honorable mentions. Characters while still being great villains in their own right just didn't make the cut. Uonuma Usui, Amakusa Shogo, Senkaku, Sadojima Hoji, Elder Saizuchi, Gain, Tatsumi, and Wu Heshin. Number 10. Hiruma Brothers. Kihe and Gohe. Two brothers that were set on ruining the Kamiya Dojo's reputation and taking over the land it is built upon. Kihe, the brains of Team Hiruma, acted as a kind old man who supported Kaoru in taking care of the dojo after her father passed away. A manga exclusive character, Kihe is a cunning man who uses his appearance to his advantage, putting on a smile and acting out with the demeanor of a sweet man. Kohe, the brawn, mainly took care of all the dirty work and even took upon himself the title of Hitokiri Bantosa, claiming to wield the Kamiya Kashin style to effectively drive away Kaoru's few remaining students. The two brothers were plotting to take over the dojo because of the land's high property value. In the anime, Gohei acts alone as his older brother disappears from the picture. Fun fact, it's said that Kihei's presence was scrapped because it would confuse viewers with another sweet old man, who also tended to the dojo, Dr. Genzai. Without his brother present, Gohei appears much more intelligent than he actually is, tying his background story to the Kamiya Dojo itself as a former student. Gohei was banished from the Dojo at the order of Kaoru's father, Kojiro, who also managed to sever the nerves in Gohei's right thumb, making him unable to properly wield the sword with his right hand. This fueled Gohei's plans for revenge as he used the Batosai name to ruin the Kamiya Dojo. Number 9. Izuka Informant for the Shoshu Ishin Shishi Revolutionary Forces, Izuka is also the contact person for certain assassins, namely one famed Hitokiri Batosai. He often works alongside Kenshin as the Examiner of Executions, which is actually a glorified title that means he's part of the cleanup crew. When not out on a mission, he spends most of his time drinking and gambling, and having what appears to be like a big brother role for Kenshin. He's a pretty nice guy, wouldn't you say? Well, the main reason Izuka is on this list is because he's actually a spy. Secretly working for the Yaminobu, who are a band of shogunate ninjas, Izuka gives them information on the Ishinshishi's activities and more importantly, the whereabouts of Hitokiri Batosai. You see, after Katsura Kogoro, who was the famous Ishinshishi leader, sends Kenshin out into the country to have a bit of a break from all the killing, Izuka informs the Yaminobu of this fact. With the relationship connections between Kenshin, Tomoe, the Yaminobu and the little boy they seem to have picked up on the way being complicated enough as it is, not really, but I'm staying clear of some huge spoilers. I'm just going to say the following. Izuka had a very big part to play in the final confrontation between Kenshin, the Yaminobu leader and Tomoe. Actually being the person who carries the most responsibility in all of the events that take place. After all that's done, Izuka takes his leave from the scenery, only to be confronted by a new Ishinshishi Hitokiri. Number 8. Takeda Kanryu In 
industrialist and entrepreneur extraordinaire. Takira Kanryu is a man who takes little regard for human life. His money-hungry mindset places the value of gold above all else. He's introduced as a leader of an underground crime ring and a key figure behind the distribution of opium in Edo. Kanryu hires the Onimabanshu led by Shinomori Aoshi as his personal bodyguards. He's also the man responsible for holding Takani Megumi captive since she knows how to create a deadly spider's web, a special strand of the opium drug that is highly addictive. Kanryu uses the profits of his illegal activities to fuel his weapon trading business, which, as he states himself, is the most profitable business there is. He loves guns, absolutely adores them, saying that hard work and training are no longer the prerequisite to become strong, and that swordsman skill means nothing. He can just use his money to buy a weapon like a Gatling gun, making him instantly more powerful than any warrior out there. Responsible for the deaths of hundreds, possibly thousands, Kanryu's part in the opium trade, his weapon trading activities, and the reason for the death of Aoshi's comrades, let's not forget Sanosuke's friend. Takeda Kanryu is one vile and crazy man. Number 7. Isurugi Raijuta. Rajuta has a simple dream, a dream that goes above all else, an ambition to create his own kingdom, where he dreams of swordsmen that only wield the true sword style of the samurai, Satsujin Ken. In order for him to accomplish this goal, Rajuta travels across Japan, challenging dojo masters to a duel, as was very common in the olden days, when a challenger would win this duel, the dojo and all of its assets would become his. But Rajuta simply wants to crush any who do not follow the Satsujin Ken principles. He believes the current state of swordsmanship in Japan is pathetic, and with his dojo challenges along with the creation of his kingdom, wants to set things right as they were in the past. He's the personal swordsmanship teacher of Tsukuyama Yutaro, the son of a wealthy man from the Itsu province. The manga and anime tell a different story on how Rajuta became Yutaro's teacher, but it changes little to the overall plot. In the anime, Yutaro's wealthy father is already dead, while in the manga, he's still alive. Rajuta uses the money and assets of the Tsukuyama family to raise a small army of swordsmen who share his ideology. Placing his base of operations in the Tsukuyama family's mansion and starting from within the Itsu province to create his kingdom, Rajuta is responsible for paralyzing Yutaro's right arm, making it impossible for the aspiring swordsman to ever wield the blade again. He's also responsible for having all of his men slaughtered by police forces in a confrontation between swords and rifles. Number 6. Udo Jine. He was dismissed from the Shinsengumi because he was a crazed killer. Jine doesn't care for ideals, as long as he can continue killing. So, he becomes a Hitokiri, slaying hundreds upon hundreds of people as he takes up the name of Kuragasa. Master of Nikaido Heiho, which is a sort of mind trick that places his victims in a trance-like state of fear, making them completely immobile. He is obsessed with defeating Hitokiri Batosai, the strongest of the Hitokiri. As he meets Kenshin during one of his assassinations, he is upset and disappointed that Kenshin has abandoned his Hitokiri self, doing anything he can to bring back the manslayer he desires to fight. Jine kidnaps Kaoru and takes her as a hostage. During the confrontation between him and a very angry Kenshin, Jine manages to actually bring back Kenshin's Hitokiri self by putting Kaoru under one of his strongest techniques, making it impossible for her to even breathe. Claiming the spell can only be broken if the caster is killed. Udo Jine, an absolute lack of human compassion, a complete psychopath and one of the deadliest killers in the series. Number 5. Setta Sojiro. Right hand man of Makoto Shishio and strongest of his group of elite warriors, the Jupon Gatana. Sojiro is kind of a mixed villain in that he's not actually a villain, but he is. Being embedded with Shishio's ideology at a very young age and actually being saved by it after taking matters into his own hands by dispatching his abusive family. Survival of the strongest is all he has ever known, and it is all he has ever seen to work. You could say Shishio brainwashed him, 
but in my opinion, that's being too narrow-minded. Shishio did turn him into a merciless killer, but the fact that Sojiro displays no emotion whatsoever is all because of himself. He is nicknamed the Tenken, Sword of Heaven, and with the speed that even surpasses Kenshin's godlike agility, he is a swordsman to be reckoned with. Sojiro is responsible for assassinating Okubo Toshimichi, a Ishishishi leader of Satsuma province and one of the highest ranking people in Japan's new militaristic regime. By killing Okubo, Sojiro sets in a chain of events that cause Kenshin to leave the Kamiya Dojo and travel to Kyoto to confront Shishio. It was the first stage in Shishio's plan, and with it, Sojiro is the man to blame for starting what almost ended up as a civil war. We don't know exactly how many people he's killed or what else he's responsible for, but it is safe to say that Sojiro, behind that cunning smile, is an unstoppable killing machine. Thanks for watching everyone! Part 2 will be up soon, where I will go over the most villainous villains from Rurouni Kenshin numbers 4 to 1. I had to make this a two-parter since the video was getting quite long as it is. For those of you in the future, just click this link right here to go to that video and watch the rest of this top 10. Also, there are two new, exclusive and limited edition t-shirts in the Rurouni shop. These designs will be limited to 20 prints each, so if you want one, get yours now!